I probably am the envy of quite a few fifth graders. I've, I've got a big laboratory. I work for the Smithsonian Institution. I get to play with lasers. I study volcanoes so that we can have a better understanding of why eruptions happen and then when an eruption does happen, why does it behave the way that it does. Volcanologists describe volcanic rocks as lavas which erupt and flow out across the surface and then there's pyroclastic rocks. A natural pyroclastic flow erupts from a volcano as a mixture of pumice and ash and gas that explodes upward as a cloud and then collapses to make a current. In our case, we heat up talc powder, we load them onto a conveyor belt, and then we slowly pour them into the tank at a controlled rate. That powder that we introduce flows out across the base of the current as a cloud, and that cloud is essentially the pyroclastic flow that we're simulating. So one of the challenges of understanding what's going on on a pyroclastic flow is being able to see the interior of that flow. And in a natural current, you really only see the, the outer surface of the cloud. In our experiments, we can see right through the cloud, and so what we use is some lasers to illuminate essentially a single slice through the current. We can see the laser sheets we're going to be using to illuminate the currents. And we use here, we have three laser sheets. We have a green laser sheet that's horizontal and is about five centimeters above the floor. We have a blue laser sheet that runs the length of the tank and is vertical. And then we have a red laser sheet that runs across the tank and is also vertical. And these three sheets between them give us an idea of the 3D structure of these pyroclastic flows. One of the surprises that we've had with these experiments is that there are some enormous differences in the behavior of cold currents versus warm currents. If we look at how a cold current spreads out across the floor, it spreads out more or less radially. If instead we put a hot current into the tank, it initially starts out as a somewhat radial, but then very quickly becomes a very long, narrow current. And we think this is because as the current lifts off, that upward motion of the plume basically prevents any further spread of the current to the sides. One of the other surprises that we've had is that when currents encounter a, a barrier or a topographic ridge, the currents, if they're warm, they hit that barrier and they lift off to form a plume and they really don't keep going at all. Volcanoes can inject ash up into the stratosphere. They can shut down aviation over a large fraction of the globe. They can also influence the climate. So having a better understanding of how volcanoes work can hopefully help us mitigate some of those volcanic hazards.